give you a presidential address. Thank you, Indrajit. Thank you, Indrajit. Uh, the, the, this things what you showed makes me look like a complete politician, president of different organizations. Um, friends, let me start by thanking Ishq, the managing trustee, Dr. Vikram Shah, and all of the trustees for having me as the president of Ishq, this very prestigious organization. Thank you for this day and this opportunity to speak as the president of Ishq. I came back from England in, in, in 96 as a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, started my practice. And down the line, almost till 2011, I practiced as a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, along with uh, dabbling with a few other things. But then that's in 2011 is where I took up orthoplasty. So I, I'm a young uh, kid in orthoplasty compared to so many of you here. But thank you for embracing me as an orthopedic uh, uh, orthoplasty surgeon. It's been an absolute wonderful journey and I can tell you, this is the best fraternity there is in orth orthopedics, uh, full of life. And you can see in this room, full of characters. We are so passionate about what we do. Um, of course, we're equally passionate whether petella or the spine makes the difference for what we do. We still argue about the CR and the PS and, uh, uh, and now the ultra congruent knees. We never stop arguing about the alignment now and robotic, non-robotic. These conversations go on and on and on. But come evening, we are all uh, friends with a drink in the hand and uh, have enough fun to forget the whole day. But I can tell you quite often the conversation goes back to the same controversies, what we have always done. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's, we have been speaking so intensely about so many aspects of orthoplasty. I want to just zoom out a little bit and see where we are. Arthritis has been a challenge and it's been a phenomenally difficult problem to deal with. We all know mobility is life and to get away from this, joint replacement has done the most human service there is. Most people who are crippled, especially most part of the world where they live on their own, if they have to get out and fend for themselves, live on themselves, joint replacement has done the most impeccable service to the mankind. So what is it all about? So joint replacement surgery basically takes away the pain and gives you stable mobility and gets on and helps you to get on with life. And if you look at the, I, I keep saying this, how were we designed? What were we designed for? Were we designed to live for 75, 80 years and beyond like we do now? Or when the human body was designed or evolved, the God created us to live for only those 40 or 45 years. As we are living longer, this challenge is becoming more and more. Last 200 years, the life expectancy has doubled. The life expectancy has doubled in the last 200 years. And naturally, when we live for longer and we have our body go through a lot more uh, stresses, there's bound to be some challenges of wear and tear. And if you look at it carefully, most of our joints, what we do, or arthritis, what we deal with, they all fail in varus. We have osteoarthritis of the knees. Most of them we deal with day in and day out are in varus. I just want to keep that as something in the background for you to remember. Most of the knees we deal are in varus. And if you look at the human anatomy, varying things are there, but by and large, the, the, the anatomy shows that the tibia is a slight amount of varus as the natural knee, and the forces definitely go through the inside of the knee or the medial, medial compartment more than anything else. Now, we needed to find a solution for this. What is an ideal solution for such an extensive 
problem and what can make it better? Pain, deformity, and also the stiffness, we want to take it away and keep it stable. If you zoom out, the ideal way of doing it is, can we prevent it? Is the human body designed to take the weight of us and live for 80 years, 90 years, 100 years? So how can we prevent the progression? We know that it slowly progresses, how can we prevent it? There's been many attempts, except losing weight and adapting a lifestyle. We haven't come a long way in taking away the, the, that angle of preventing arthritis. Regenerative medicine. This has taken a different shape altogether in so many walks of life. We have tried many things to see if we can regrow the cartilage. We have injected many things inside. We always wondered if we can grow the cartilage in the lab and slap it back on the end of the bones so that this arthritis is not replacing, but to have it regenerate in the right way. That hasn't come a long way, but we need to watch this space. I was at a meeting in San Diego, it's called Exponential Medicine, conducted by Singularity University. And when, we, when I was there, I was picked and asked, do Indians, do you like to live for 120 years? And I said, not really. Then they said, why Indians don't like living for 120 years? I said, you can live 120 years provided you live with the same vitality and vigor. And there is an incorporation called longevity incorporation, and we can clearly see that these people firmly believe that the longevity of human life is going to go to 120 years as we go along. So I, I was joking last evening, the way Ashok is going, if anybody has to do a knee replacement for him, it should last for 50 years because he's going to live for 120 years with his fitness. So it's so important to look at the longer version of the game. When we, there's a problem statement was, a knee replacement problem statement was there's arthritis, it's painful, it is stiff, it's deformed. We needed a correction. We looked at it purely from an engineering point of view and say, what will do this job? And we came out with an answer that we load the joint equally on both sides when we walk and we use materials which, uh, which take away the pain. The end of the bones are covered with metal and we put a polyethylene inside which gives us an alignment and it is stable throughout the range of movement. And this concept was purely based on engineering and it was designed, it's been practiced, and it has given us good results. Over 20 years, the results, 25 years, the results have been very good. Now, this was a pure engineering biomechanical concept. Suddenly, we are not happy. And it should be that way. It should always be that way. We can never be satisfied. We wanted something more, something more to be done. We found that 20% or 18% or 12%, whatever number you put, these people are not happy. Now, one day I had Mr. Bakshi, uh, who was doing an interview with me uh, for Forbes, and he came into the operation theater and saw me doing a joint replacement surgery. He really closed his eyes. He, said, he thought, I'm a sophisticated, good surgeon. He saw me using the saw and cutting all the bone up. He said, this looks horrendous. This is not fine surgeon what we thought you are. Let us understand, this is an amputation of the end of the bone. We are taking away end of the bone. It's a, quite a drastic surgery. There is no way whatever we put back and give us the same anatomy. God's work cannot be recreated by putting a metal implant at the end, taking away all the proprioception and giving stability. It has got its own limitation. There's a long way to imitate God's work and create exactly what we have done. We also forgot in this quest for taking away that 18, 20% of the people's problems, we also forgot that there are so many other variables which we looked at, but did we look at it hard enough, consistently enough? We, do, do we look at appropriate patient selection? Do we wait long enough till the arthritis becomes really so sore that a substitute is good? That's what it is. It's not a perfect replacement, but it takes away the pain and gives you mobility. Psychological profiling, how deeply do we do it? Do we 
let us put our hand on the heart and tell her, how do we set the expectation of the patients? Everybody is busy building the practice, and we promise the patient we'll give you the moon. And obviously, they're not happy. We ourselves do not understand the limitations of what we are doing. And it's so important, right from incision, what we make, which gives them pain and neuromas, to what we are putting inside can give, be a substitute for pain and mobility, but it cannot be an answer to ask them, does it feel natural and does it feel good? I'm mostly talking about a knee replacement here. So with all these unknowns, still our quest for something better went on. What, how did we look at this? Our understanding of the anatomy got better. We had great imaging, so our understanding got better. Our understanding of kinematics got better with so much of possibilities. And most importantly, we found tools to be very, very precise. These tools of precision took us away from so many other basic things we should be looking at. Now, we are talking about so many alignment strategies, made with kinematic, adjusted kinematic, mechanical, reverse kinematic. There are so many variations which are being practiced, and we are practicing them very, very precisely. This worries me. Precision without purpose is very, very worrying. My dear friend Guru is not here, but he told me over a conversation, he reviewed all the patients he has operated in the last so many years, and he found 30% are outliers. When 30% are outliers and all of them are doing well, most of these strategies are working. So I keep saying, Either one of the strategy has to be right, because that's what we're doing, or all the strategies have to be right. It's very, it is very strange to look at everybody saying this strategy is right or that strategy, without the proof that one is superior to the other. End of the day, it feels like if you have got a well-balanced knee, it will do well in the short term. How will it do in the long term? We are yet to prove ourselves. And I have had this dilemma for the longest time, ever since I joined the medical profession, maybe even before that. Let's look at this whole world with so many challenges in healthcare. We had a beautiful talk by Indrajit, spoke about unequal healthcare. There has been solution for arthritis for over 55, 60 years now, since John Chanley established as a good procedure. How many people in this country and most part of the world get it done even though this technology and science is available? Over 100 years ago, heart transplant was done. How many people have it done? How important it is to keep on pushing the boundaries and making things better in science and equally how we overlook the need for reaching this technology and what we have to many, many people. Most people cannot even walk and go around. They are not worried about going beyond 25 years or having 100% satisfaction rate. Have a little thought about that. The amount of money spent on all of this is billions and billions of dot, uh, dollars. And can we make it more equitable? Can we sit back and say, can we offer this surgery to more people and make more people's life better rather than looking at how can I improve this little percentage? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against research. I'm not against development. That's the only way the world has developed. I can also tell you, this world is run by high IQ individuals. This world is run by the intellectual people. And most intellectual people make the decisions first and justify it later. That's the way we are. We like it, we say it, and we have got a thousand arguments to justify what, why we have made that decision. All I'm saying is, it's my plea. I'm saying, please, this science is evolving. Let's keep doing research. Let's keep it on the research table, whether it is preventive medicine, whether it is regenerative medicine, whether it's alignment technology with robotics and many other gadgets, let's keep going. But do not make this the standard of practice. If you make it, like Indrajit slide yesterday said, almost the people who do not use these gadgets are considered inferior orthopedic surgeons. That cannot be true. That's not good for the society. We, this world still needs many surgeons. This, this world still needs surgeons 
who can, uh, rather I would put it the other way around, this world still needs techniques which can be done by most surgeons with least amount of gadgetry and inventory. This world, this patients, this, the patients in this world need a safe, long surviving, mobile, stable knee to take them through life and do not, they do not expect that 100% satisfaction all the time because it's the choice is this or otherwise. And let's keep this conscious in our mind as leaders of this field and be more empathetic to the world because we belong to the society first and then to the orthopedic fraternity. Thank you.